Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can image trace inside of Illustrator to convert pixel based artwork into vectors. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So the whole point of being able to take pixel based content and convert it into vector artwork is that in some cases it can give you more flexibility. Perhaps you've been supplied a graphic or an icon and opened up in Photoshop and you've seen the limitations with it. Maybe you want to use it a lot bigger in scale, but because it's made of pixels and um, that will limit the way that you can have it printed out or shown on screen. So if you can import artwork into Illustrator, there are ways in which we can convert that pixel based content into brand new vector shapes. So it will allow you to avoid having to go and build stuff from scratch or trace it over with the pen tool, the pencil tool and things like that and save a lot of time. As with all these features, there are things to be aware of and I want to show you some things that are, will, will give you the most out of image trace and things to look out for. So the examples I've got here actually inside Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, um, you'll see that if I uh, zoom in to some of this content, you can see that there are made of pixels. So I'm going to start off with a nice simple example. I've also then got um, a kind of an art based uh, text version here that I'm going to show you how we can uh, trace all of the characters in here, even where they overlap as well. Um, so again, you'll see here that these are all made of pixels. And then the final one is photographic content, because uh, with image trace, you can take photographic content like this and you can turn the pixels into vector shapes. So I will show you some pros and cons with that as well. So here in Illustrator, I have the first example and um, I'm just going to quickly work through the presets in here. Now, when I have my files in here, I've got on the left hand side, I've got imported versions of that pixel based art we've just seen in Photoshop. So on the left hand side and the right hand side at the moment, they are identical, already placed inside of here. So I'm going to keep the original one on the left hand side and then I'll always turn the, uh, the, the duplicated version on the right hand side into vector artwork. So you can see here, can you see the labels? Just so you know wh where we're at with this. Now you could go to the window menu, go down the list to uh, properties, the new properties panel that appeared about a year ago in 2018 inside of Illustrator. There is an option in there with, of course, your artwork selected that is that you'll see in here under quick actions, uh, image trace. And if I was to left click on that, it'll give you a list of presets to work through. I would tend to suggest, unless it's something really simple, as in just maybe one symbol that's uh, a dark color on a plain white background, I would tend to stray away from that. And instead, I'm gonna close this down and I'm then gonna to go to the full image trace panel because it will give you options that you won't necessarily have the benefit of seeing. So under image trace here, panel opens up and this is pretty much how it appears when you see it for the first time. The best starting point is actually to work from the top of this dialog box all the way down to the bottom. So hovering over the options in here, we've got, first of all, and I'm going to click on these. And I will speed up the video so that you're not sat here waiting for it to render all the time, but here also color. So if I left click on this one, Illustrator will then do a pass of this artwork and give you uh, a vector tracing of the original pixel based content and then show you as close as it can using the original colors convert a vector artwork. So that is um, auto. If I then show you the other one, which is high color, this is more really intended for photographic content or where you've got a lot of detail. See the difference? So particularly in the gradients, we're seeing a lot more tonality in there. We've lost the banding that we saw in the auto version, but you'll have to bear in mind, take a look at the figures at the bottom of the image trace panel. Um, there is a significant difference between the number of paths, anchor points and colors it will use to create that high detail version. It might not necessarily be an easy thing to edit because it will create literally, as you can see here, 757 paths to create all of those, to recreate all of those uh, pixel based shapes in there. So the other one then is um, low color. Low color is very similar to auto. It will try and replicate the colors that in the original pixel based artwork and give you a low detail rendering of that. So that is low color. And to be honest, quite a lot of the time, if I do have color based content, I will go for low color, which is a good one to choose. Good starting point. Then we have grayscale. As you can see, it takes all the colors and then converts them into grayscale tones in here. 
So obviously the, the darker the color was, then the darker it will appear in the rendering in there. Again, you might find that some of your content disappears because with grayscale, you have a grayscale slider. And then depending on where this value is in here to capture certain colors, you might find that some elements of your artwork disappear, some um, will render as we can see here, but you might have to alter the grayscale slider in there to be able to pick up objects that have disappeared from the rendering. Then we have black and white. So in here, you get quite literally black and then white. It's also included the white background that was in the original artwork as well. So again, with this one, even more so than grayscale, you'll have a threshold slider in here and you'll have to find that you drag that to the left or the right hand side and any of the colors in the original pixel based artwork that were darker than this value that we have in here. So this basically works on uh, illuminance levels of 256 shades of uh, grayscale, starting with black being the darkest, white the brightest. And so here, if the slide is over towards the right hand side, in here then any of the colors that you find are disappearing because they're quite light you might have to drag this slider over towards the right hand side for them to be picked up and detected so you see here now because i've dragged that slider towards the right hand side almost to its maximum value it's 242 in there of a maximum of 256 some of the lighter colors that were ignored now because i have included and dragged that slider across because they are now darker than this 242 value in here, they appear in the render. So the basic principle is the threshold slider, if the original colors are darker than the point in which you have dragged this slider to, anything here that's darker in your artwork will appear in the rendering. But you're gonna get very simple shapes. So this might not be what you want. Um, and then the final one is outlines. So if your pixel-based artwork lends itself to being converted into vector artwork and just lines then it might work so you can see here from the original pixel based artwork on the left hand side the space invader shapes that were made of pixels but only shown as lines have transferred across for the most part fairly well in there so here with this example i have got some original kind of um, art based type in here that perhaps is locked into pixels and I want to be able to do something with them inside of Illustrator to take those shapes, rearrange them into words that I might want to assemble, but get this kind of nice arty feel to it. So from here, then what I will do is I'm going to go down and take a basic look at my artwork. You know, there are including the white background. There is black, there's yellow, there's kind of a turquoise color, and then there's a, a purple in there as well. So we've got roughly six colors. I'm not interested in having the white in this. Um, but roughly six is what I'm thinking of and probably low color will work for this. So low color will work on uh, when I click on it in here, it will do a rendering of the artwork and it'll give me up to about 30 colors to work with. So that's how it classes low color from two to 30 possible colors. Illustrator will take a guess at this as well and figure out how many it actually needs to be able to render this artwork. So what we're seeing now, is vector artwork a conversion of that from the pixel based content at first glance you know it looks pretty good but again i would say that this is the kind of artwork that lends itself to image trace to give you good results so from here then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the window menu choose new window and then this will give me two windows for the same file i can go up to the uh, panel menu at the top and then choose to split the document uh, two up vertically and then we can see the original version over here. I'm going to zoom into that with the zoom tool. And so we can see this nice and clearly. So we can see the difference between them and move my image trace panel here. And then for this window where I have my artwork traced, that's here you can see uh, image trace of that. Zoom in a little bit closer to see a comparison between the two in there. So I would say take an initial look at it are you happy with it as it picked up all the details that you want first glance i would say is that we have lost a little bit detail in here notice that there are some dots in the o over here that have been lost we've lost a couple of uh, kind of ink marks around the the letters in there as well so some of it has been missed um so first thing is i would say once you've taken a look oh, it's a comparison between the two you know where you stand at this moment in time then go down to the color slider and i would say you want to try and reduce this down as much as you can because the more colors that you're using 
the more shapes it'll make, the more complex it'll be to edit, and then you lose a little bit of flexibility there, and you're going to have more work to do. So swipe over that. I'm going to go for eight in this case. Just play on the side of caution, and then hit the return key, and I'll have to wait for Illustrator to do an updated render of that. And so now um, you can see that it is picking up eight colors inside of here. We've got a slight drop in there with the uh, with a count as well. And the uh, next thing then really is to go to the advanced uh, toggle and open that up. And we have three sliders to work with. So you've got paths, corners and noise. So you can hover your cursor over the names of these to give you a hint towards what they'll do. So taking a look at the original uh, on the left hand side and then the vector version on the right hand side. How close does our vector tracing match the original? And then um, I would say from here, we've lost particularly noticing where the B is in the original there. We've lost some detail on the right hand side. So for paths, I would tend to say at this point, turn off preview, because if you're dragging these around, it's going to then have an effect on the amount of time it takes to do this. So take a best guess with this. I would say from here, I'm going to bump it up to about 80% there. Hit return to then force that change. And it won't update the moment because I've turned off the preview checkbox. And then look at corners. So with our artwork, is it predominantly made of corners and right angles, straight lines? Or is it kind of a more um, curvy based artwork? Well, the nature of the brush marks in here, it is. So I don't need more corners. I probably want less in there. So I'm going to drop that down to about half its uh, current size. So 25% in there and hit return. Again, these are just guesstimates. And then the final slider is noise. So essentially with this one, how big does something have to be in the original pixel based artwork to just be even detected? So at the moment and the default for pretty much all of these image trace presets is something has to be 15 pixels in diameter to be, de to, to be detected. So with that one, if I'm thinking that I've lost some details that I really want, such as kind of the two little ink marks here in the O that have disappeared on the one on the right hand side, then from here, I might swipe over that. And let's just say, again, go for a half value of that, about half, eight pixels in there. And then I would then go down to the bottom and click on trace. You can actually click on preview as well if you want to do the same thing. And then Illustrator will update the preview you've got on screen. And there we go. We have now a slightly better rendition of that original pixel based art. We've got more details into the B in there. We're now picking up those smaller details as well because we changed the noise slide and reduced that to detect smaller details. If we want to go a little bit further and we want to pick up even more detail, then I would say that paths in here, we could possibly just crank that up to 90% and just see what it gives us. And we've got a little bit of enhancement, but I'm not seeing too, it's not a radical change, but I am happier with the amount of detail that's in there. The danger is that if we go really too high, if we're going up something close to 100, we may well see lots of uh, extra paths and anchor points added without a great deal of extra value in terms of how the artwork looks. So with this now, all the three sliders done, that's really stage two. And then the final finishing off bits are method. So here you've got two options. The default is it's called a butting. So do you want Illustrator to create vector artwork of only what you can see? And what I specifically mean by that is with the turquoise colored A in there, it overlaps part of the letter C in there in the brush mark. Now, if we were to leave on its default option, when we then get to all this vector artwork and pull it apart and we separate the letters out, there would be a gap in the C in there. And that may be not something you want. It will give you less anchor points and things like that. And it will give you a cleaner rendition in vector artwork. But you're going to find that if some of your content does overlap, we're not going to see that rendered inside of Illustrator. Now, I do want those shapes. So I'm going to choose the other option, which is the this is the default here, a butting. The one on the right hand side is called overlapping and that will get illustrated to guess what should happen in areas like where the A crosses over the letter C in there. We should get a now a fully formed C when the artwork is then um, edited in, in uh, with anchor points in the direct selection tool and things like that. And then the other thing is um, you've got two options down here, depending on what you've gone for. So here I've just chosen overlapping, which means that I can't choose ignore white, just how it works. The background colors in there, it's part of what it does to try and guess how the colors work in the document. So 
you can't um, you can't ignore white but if you've not got uh, overlapping turned on as a method then you could choose to ignore white that can be quite handy because in some cases if you've got a dark logo or a symbol and you want to trace it from a white background then once you've done and traced and turned it to vector artwork you can get straight to that symbol and there's no kind of deleting needed if you want to reduce the anchor count and the um the path count you could choose the snap curves to lines but in this case we don't really need to we want to keep this kind of nice art feel to this so with this done then what i'm going to do is i'm going to close down the window on the left hand side to go back to seeing both of these at the same time but slightly smaller and then when i'm done as i am here i want to then progress this vector artwork you're gonna have to expand it open so um uh, you can go to um the object menu at the top of the screen you could choose expand from the list in there also in the window menu you have the properties panel again here properties panel there is a great big button there under quick actions for expand if i click on it there and then you can now see the anchor points that form all those shapes and things i would then suggest that you go to the ungroup button whilst it's all still selected and keep clicking on that until ungroup no longer is an option down at the bottom you know that you've separated all those elements out of separate shapes i'll then click away hover my cursor over this region here which will be the original white background left click on it and then press the delete key to delete it uh, and so from here then looking at the two you know we've got a pretty good rendition in vectors uh, of that original pixel based artwork in there i'm i'm fairly happy with that um so i'm going to focus now on the right hand side artboard uh, for the rest of this uh example i don't need the image trace panel now so moving it to the side i don't actually need it whatsoever uh, and then i will close down the properties and it's always worthwhile afterwards when you start to move this content around if you want to clean it up further it is often going to, uh, worth going to the view menu and choosing outline because it may well be that you get sometimes uh, shapes that appear over the object where it's just traced them in a slightly different color but you've got extra paths in there you don't need outline view is a good way of being able to clean and tidy things up as well so that is worth doing just to make sure how clean your artwork is in does a good job for us in here in, in all honesty so i'm going to go back to view and then choose preview and then you'll notice i can click on the w in there there is a little bit of an ink mark there so if i want to include it i might have to click and drag across that and then possibly the one underneath it as well to be part of that letter and its, its characteristics i can go to object and then group and uh, from here on in i'll use the keyboard shortcut for that and i can move this to the side um so i can then let's see how it's done with the a so if i select the a in there and then zoom in with the keyboard shortcut um i want to grab all ah so take a look at this because we chose overlapping we now have where it looks like it's white background it's actually a shape so if i just go to edit and choose undo move it puts the white shape back in front of the turquoise shape in there so if i hold down the shift key and shift and left click on the turquoise shape i'm going to need to go to window and then go down the list to pathfinder and then i actually want to use the white shape that's in front of the turquoise shape to cut a hole in it so from here then i'll choose minus front punches a hole in it in there and now when i click away should there we go yeah got all that in there i'm going to hover over and left click shift and left click on the other two turquoise circular elements in there and then i'll go to object uh, and then i'll choose group and then zoom out and then pull this to the side out of the way and there that is probably if i pick up my zoom tool hopefully just a white shape but no it hasn't so it's slightly frustrating that it's done that um in most cases you would get that letter c in there running down and all being combined together but unfortunately it hasn't done that for us um let's just go to view and then choose outline to see what other shapes are in the area so if i click on that one yeah that's probably white in there we don't need that so i can delete it and then we've got uh, an element in there we don't need we'd really need to connect these two together in here so i would tend to suggest that um i pick my direct selection tool select that shape and then i will pull the anchor points down here and get them to overlap like this and then pull them around in this region try not to make a complete mess of it um, zoom in here switch to my direct selection tool move them away grab that one don't need that one 
and then just do a little bit of tweaking here just to match them all up pull them across and get them to overlap like this and then switch back to my selection tool zoom out and then go back to view and preview and there it's overlapping in there so I can select that shape shift and left click on that one and then use the uh, unite option in there to combine them as one shape so it's a bit frustrating that it didn't get give us all the C in there um, he did his best bless it illustrator but um, to no avail this time um, so that's how I'd probably remedy it to be honest and then I can shift click on these other shapes as well and then I would go and um, grab the other ones as well that's all part of the same letter C in there and then group those and then fit art body window and move them over to the side in there so you can see the process that I'll be going through here it's cleaning things up but you know this is you know as i say a good example of something that's got a nice clean background it will translate well into vector artwork if you need to use it and as you can see here if i pick the capital a and then scale it in size we have that flexibility we can go to window we can choose from the list in here swatches and we can quickly and easily change the colors of these elements which is something that would take us a lot longer inside of adobe photoshop so that is i would say a perfect example of a piece of artwork formed in pixels that you will get good results from inside of Illustrator. Again, same scenario. We have two pixel based bits of artwork uh, dropped into this document, the one on the right hand side window, and then go down to image trace from the list. And yes, it is possible to vector trace photographic content with lots and lots of detail in. Um, so it's not giving me options in the image trace panel in here. If that does happen, you might have to click away from your artwork and then click back on it again and it kind of springs to life. So this scenario would require us really to go to the high color option there. Now be prepared to wait a while for this because there's so much detail it's got to match and trace. And there we have it. Um, we have on the face of it what looks like wow you know this is actually now really vectors um you will really need to first of all take a look at the path and the anchor count pretty high um naturally because there's a lot of detail in here so if i pick up my zoom tool as you zoom in you will start to see that it is clearly been vector traced in there so we've got a lot of posterization as even that we've got bands of color not the same lovely fall off tonality that we had in the in the photograph as well so again if i go here and if i choose window new window and then if i split the view of my artwork in here to vertical uh, over on the left hand side if i pan across in here to view that is the original move the uh, image trace panel out of the way and this is the image trace version over here so Notice where we've got some lovely fall off on the feathers here. Um, that now looks posterized in this version. And from here, I'm not going to tinker around with the options because we will be here a lot longer than this video already is. So again, I will go up to the object menu. I'll choose expand and then I'll choose to click OK to that. And then that's what we're dealing with. So a quick view of this in outline mode. Uh, if I deselect take a look at that you yes can get a, you know what on the face of it looks like a nice vector tracing of pixel based artwork with high detailing it really isn't something that you would want to spend a lot of time editing because there are so many shapes in here that you're going to spend a lot of time tweaking this and you may end up regretting it so that's it folks that's how we can take original pixel based artwork and we can then get to those uh, elements that we need as vectors to be able to have a little bit more flexibility in the editing workflow thanks again for watching folks and um, as always you can always subscribe to the channel click on the bell to get notifications and until next time farewell